Here's the schedule one, additional income and adjustments to income. This is uh, part two, and we're looking here at the uh, educator expenses now. First, let's remember that the normal and natural types of deductions we would expect to have in an income tax type of systems are those deductions that were necessary in order to generate the revenue. In other words, it would be natural for us to say, well, if you had to expend this money to generate the revenue, then we might tax you on the net income as opposed to the gross income, a concept we can see clearly when we're looking at the Schedule C, where we have, in essence, another income statement for the business income minus the deductions, which are expenses, in essence, getting us to the net income. We don't see that as clearly on many tax returns that just have W-2 income because we don't have all those expenses because we assume that those are incurred by the employer in that situation. So I point that out to note the contrast in other kinds of deductions, which kind of have a political nature to them, or the government is trying to nudge us or incentivize us, change our behavior in some way. When you look at the educator expenses, you're talking about a certain uh, group of people that work in a certain industry that typically get W-2 wages, but we have this educator expense credit designed specifically for them. And that happened quite some time ago. And it might be like the power of the unions kind of uh, at work and whatnot. Although you might say, well, that's still pretty small uh, credit at this point. And that's in part because it is an older credit. So this is something that was put in place a long time ago. And it just kind of hung on there. Although it's not been increased automatically all the time for inflation. And therefore the dollar amount has looked look more and more relatively low compared to... to uh, to what it prior was, uh, for example, or to normal people's income at this point in time. So if people qualify for a qualified educator, usually you're thinking someone that's working as, as a teacher in like K through 12, for example, then you would assume that they would generally get this credit. So it's something to just kind of basically be aware of. You're saying, what, what occupation do they have? If they're a teacher, then you're thinking they're probably going to have this credit. Obviously, they need the information to back up the fact that they spent this money uh, in work in order to to uh, satisfy an audit of this of this number. But usually you would think if someone qualifies as an instructor and they're a full time teacher, they probably do spend, you know, three hundred dollars uh, in order to a year in order to uh, to facilitate the classroom. And there's a very low cap. Uh, on it there. So in other industries, obviously you might think, well, I do other stuff that's like important. I'm a nurse or something or, or something like that. I should get to deduct some of the stuff that I bring into my patients to make their room. I'm, you know, I'm bringing stuff for the room and stuff. People spend money on their work. Uh, but again, it was something that was specially designed in part, you've got to think because the teachers unions, you know, kind of pushed that through. So it is what it is. So we got that special kind of thing for the for the educator expense so line 11 educator expenses if you were an eligible educator in 2022 you can deduct on line 11 up to 300 dollars a qualified expenses you paid in 2022 so again the dollar amount is relatively low it hasn't changed too much over time because it hasn't had an automatic increase uh with inflation so 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 but it still kind of has stuck around this whole time it's it's kind of an interesting thing so if you uh, and your spouse are filing jointly and both of you were eligible educators, the maximum deduction is $600, which makes sense. You got two teachers in that case. However, neither spouse can deduct more than $300 or the, of their qualified expenses on line 11. An eligible educator is a kindergarten through grade 12 teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide who worked in a school for at least 900 hours during a school year. Qualified expenses include ordinary and necessary necessary expenses paid so that's kind of the general rule that you would normally expect on like a schedule c type of business in a natural kind of uh deductibility component if i had to expend something in order to generate the revenue i should be able to deduct that so that you tax me on the net income as opposed to the gross income however if you're a w-2 employee most people don't get any of those deductions at this point in time because it's assumed that as an employee, your employer is taking care of that situation. Obviously, 
industries are different in terms of how much the the employer is taking care of it and when you're taking care of people like like nurses and teachers and whatnot uh, i'm sure a lot of, you know a lot personal money could clearly be spent <laughs> that would that would that would uh, go out of people's pockets but that's true for a lot of professions as well so in any case for professional development courses uh, you have taken related to the curriculum uh, you teach or to the students you teach or in connection with books, supplies, equipment, including computer equipment, software, and services, and other materials used in the classroom. So obviously you would want the backup to support this in the event of an audit and whatnot, but you would think that most teachers, if they qualify, would, would possibly have those expenses, and therefore you should be able to, you know, assume you should be able to take the deduction generally if someone is a qualified teacher, you would think. So an ordinary expense is one that is common and accepted in your educational field. A necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your profession as an educator. An expense doesn't have to be required to be considered necessary. Tip, qualified expenses include amounts paid or incurred in 2022 for personal protective equipment, uh, disinfectant and other supplies used for prevention of the spread of coronavirus. So it was kind of funny during this whole time of, you know, the coronavirus w wasn't funny, but during that time, I thought it was kind of funny that they kind of advertised the fact that they've expanded the definition of qualified expenses so people can take this $300 uh, expense credit to include, you know, sanitary supplies and whatnot that you might have paid for in the classroom as if they needed that to reach the $300, like the, they didn't increase the threshold. They just said, you know, you know, I think most teachers already hit the threshold, you know, they didn't, didn't really do anything. So I thought that was kind of funny, but anyways, qualified expenses don't include expenses for homeschooling or for uh, non-athletic supplies for courses in health or physical education. You must reduce your qualified expenses by the following amounts. Uh, excludable U.S. Series EE and I savings bond interest from Form 8815, non-taxable qualified tuition program earnings or distributions, any non-taxable distribution of Coverdale education saving account earnings, and any reimburse uh, you received for these expenses that weren't reported to you in Box 1 of your Form W-2. So for more information on those, uh, use tax topic 458 or C publication 529.